Unified Network 9.0, which was released in early 2025, introduced the zone-based firewall. And that's when firewall rules went from confusing for a lot of people to much easier to understand. Instead of creating separate LAN in, LAN out, and LAN local rules, you could just group VLANs into zones and manage rules that way. Now with Unified Network 9.4, there's a new feature called object-oriented networking. Instead of manually understanding and building firewall rules, you can create objects that automatically handle it all for you, but it's not only firewall rules. In this video, we'll take a closer look at how it all works and why it might change how you manage your Unify setup entirely. So this is the Unify zone-based firewall. And in general, what you're really doing is you're creating different zones and grouping VLANs into those zones and then creating firewall rules from zone to zone. That way, when you add a VLAN to a zone, it will automatically assume the same firewall rules that that zone has. I just did a video on some of the best practices for this, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now, this new setup does not necessarily replace the Unify zone-based firewall. I'd still suggest that you use it, but what it does is it adds on top of it. So we're gonna be looking at this from two perspectives really. We'll be looking at this from the object-oriented networking perspective, but also from the policy perspective. So the first thing that you're going to see is that this is the new section here. So you can do a lot here and we're gonna talk through just about all of it. But the first thing that you'll see is that you can select devices or networks. Networks are just going to be your VLANs. Devices will be the physical devices on your network. Now, in terms of devices, you have two ways that you can really manage them. You can go in and you can individually select specific devices, or you can create groups. So what that allows you to do is just create a group for your devices that you can then use inside of this object-oriented networking section. So I created this security cameras group here, and if you ever wanted to modify that group, it's actually in the client devices section. So in the client devices section, you'll see this new section here for groups, and that's where you can go in and edit the group if you ever wanted to add or remove devices from it. So we're gonna create a basic policy here, and what we're going to do is we're gonna block the security cameras from the internet. So that group that I created is what I'm going to use. Now, inside of this section here, you have three options. You have secure, route, and quality of service. We'll talk about route and quality of service later. We're gonna focus on secure right now. So when you check off secure, it's immediately going to default to internet. So what you have to do is determine exactly what you want to do from an internet perspective. So by default, if you check off secure, it will block everything from an internet perspective. So you have one of two ways that you can manage this. You can allow everything. You can turn off the internet entirely, but you have to select something. So if you just come in here and uncheck this option, it's not going to allow you to save it because you have to actually select something. So for me, if I wanted to block the internet, I'm just gonna turn off the internet. And then at that point, I could add this rule, and then we'll see that our first object-oriented networking rule was created. So how does that work? Well, it creates a firewall rule. And in specific, it creates this firewall rule right here. And all it's saying is basically that these 16 devices can no longer access the internet. It is blocked from accessing the internet. So what's interesting about the object-oriented networking section is that it does not really care about the zone. So if you go through all of your zones, what you will see is that there is a block security cameras rule that has been created. And the reason for that is because we selected individual devices. We didn't go through and select specific VLANs, but let's see how VLANs work. So it's important to understand that when you create a rule like this, it will technically apply to every single zone, assuming you're using the zone-based firewall outside of the external gateway and VPN zone. Those are the three zones that it will not apply to. So we're gonna create a new object here. And what we're gonna do is block the guest VLAN to the surveillance VLAN. So inside of the network section here, I'm going to check off guest. I'm going to select secure. I'm going to allow for the internet perspective everything. I imagine in the future, they're going to allow you to check this on or off the same way you can for local here. I don't know if that's designed or if it's not designed, 
But as of right now, you have to select something. So we're going to allow everything, and then we're going to select local. And then what we're gonna do is select block list, and rather than blocking everything, we're going to block a specific network, and then we will select our surveillance network, and then we will save this object. So basic object, block guest to surveillance. So what you'll see is that our guest VLAN is part of the hotspot zone, and our surveillance VLAN is part of the no internet untrusted zone. So if we scroll down to that specifically, what you'll see is that two rules were created, one for the local traffic that we wanted to block and one for the internet traffic. So remember that allow rule that we created, that's this one right here. But the block rule, what you'll see is it does exactly what we want, block the guest VLAN from accessing the surveillance VLAN. But this is where it defers from the zone-based firewall. Now, if you created a firewall rule, generally what you do is you would create a specific rule that applied from that zone, meaning from the hotspot zone to let's say the untrusted no internet zone. But when you create an object, what you're really doing is blocking it for all of your zones. So if I cycle through my zones, you'll see that that block guest to surveillance is there for all of them. So unlike the zone-based firewall, where you generally create a firewall rule based on the source zone and the destination zone that those VLANs are part of, the object just kind of blanket creates a firewall rule, which isn't inherently a problem because remember, you don't have to manage these firewall rules. You're going to manage it at the object level. So if you ever wanted to delete it, you're gonna delete it from here and it will delete then from the zone-based firewall section. So that's how you can use this secure section here. But let's say you wanted to route your traffic through something like a privacy VPN. So I just did a video on routing traffic through Proton VPN. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But what you can do is basically use this route section. So rather than going in and creating a policy like I did in that video, you can create an object. So let's say I wanted this group that I just created, Proton VPN devices, to route over that VPN tunnel, the VPN client that I created. What we do is select route, we would pick the exact traffic that we want to route over, and then we'd select the interface. In this case, it's Proton VPN for me. Now, at that point, what it's doing is when you add this, it's creating a policy-based route. So what you'll see is this Proton VPN, that's what I created in that video, but this route through Proton VPN is the object that we just created. Now, the final thing would be quality of service. So if you wanted to, what you could do is same thing, select a group, select devices, and then you can either prioritize or limit traffic. It could be for all traffic, it could be for specific applications. So let's say you wanted to prioritize Zoom, you could go in and prioritize that Zoom traffic for specific devices here. Now, in terms of if you would use this or how often you would use this, really for any of these sections, it's kind of up to you. The point is this gives you one section here where you can create and manage just about everything that you have to rather than creating individual policies, individual firewall rules, et cetera. Which then leads to the question of when should you use objects? And I think it really depends. So for the secure section, meaning for the firewall rules that you can create, I'd still suggest that you set up the zone-based firewall. I think it's easier to manage in the long run, meaning you can create a zone, you can add VLANs to that zone, and then at that point, anytime you add a new VLAN to that zone, it will automatically assume those firewall rules. That's really what it's designed for. From that perspective, I'd say you should continue to use the zone-based firewall. But let's say you want to block internet for certain devices. Do you wanna go and create a firewall rule for that or do you wanna create an object? In all honesty, it's a lot easier to create an object, which then begs the question of, do you need to create firewall rules? Not really, technically, if you have a very basic setup, you can just use this section here, manage all of your firewall rules this way, have for the most part the exact same setup as somebody that went in and created a bunch of firewall rules, but it'd be a lot easier to manage. There's also the route and quality of service section. So you can go in and create objects that way to route through VPN tunnels or to prioritize traffic. But this is one section where you can go in and really do everything that you have to for your devices. And while we went over firewall rules from a blocking everything perspective, it doesn't have to be everything. 
You could block specific applications at specific times to ensure that you can or can access specific devices if you had kids, et cetera, at certain times. As you start to go through this, you'll see just how granular this could get. Because if you really wanted to, you could pick specific devices, specific applications in those devices, and then route them over a specific VPN tunnel. It's not like you have to do it for only one of these. You can combine multiple to have very, very granular objects. So I think that just about everything we've seen with Unify Network 9.0 has brought us to this point. It all has kind of built on top of one another, but the object-oriented networking is going to be something that beginners are going to love. And it's not necessarily a situation where it's right or wrong to do things a certain way. Some people will prefer firewall rules. Some people will prefer objects. It's kind of up to you, but overall, it's kind of hard to dislike something like this. It makes it super easy to do exactly what you need to do. So I'm hoping you guys got some value out of this. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.